Hey guys, it's Ruben here with a big video for the game 9 Parchments. This one is for a guide on how to unlock all the characters and their variations in the game. There are 8 different characters in the game and each one has 4 variations. Yep, 32 characters in all. When you start the game, there are only 2 characters that are unlocked, Cornelius Crownsteed and Gislan of Alcyon. The other 30 characters need to be unlocked by doing specific feats in the game that are specific to each character and their variation. Now, there is a trophy for each character that you unlock, meaning 30 trophies are for unlocking characters. This is quite insane, but some are tougher than others. Now, other than Cornelius and Gislan, whom you have from the beginning, you need to unlock the other 6 by doing specific side quests related to them while going through the game. So watch out for them. Don't worry, as I'm going through each character, I will show you how to unlock them. Keep in mind that the first three variations for each character can be unlocked in any difficulty, but the final character variations, the gilded versions, you know the ones that have wings and are garbed in gold, well, you can only unlock these gilded variations by doing the character quests in hardcore difficulty. So make sure you are well prepared as death in hardcore means start from the beginning. Now let's get started. The way this is going to work is for the first variation of each character I will explain their quest, show how to unlock them, and then start giving advice for the feats you will need to do to unlock the other variations. Now I can't actually show how to unlock each feat as some I unlocked randomly. I will however explain the best way to unlock each feat and also recommend the best spells and enemies to fight for those feats. This may sound lazy, but think about it guys, the game has no level select or level restart option, meaning if I want to record a specific level, I will have to start from the beginning of the game. Imagine that for 30 characters, and yeah, my sanity would get flushed down the toilet. So I will provide footage for the important ones, but the less important ones, you know, the easier and self-explanatory ones, will just be me explaining it. And if you are disappointed about that, well, I'm sorry. I'd like to finish my trophy guide sometime this week, not in like 2-3 weeks. Kidding. Either way, this just begs for level select, so please, Frozen Bites, if you're hearing this, you know, answer for our please. Right, now that all things are in order, let's get this going. Number 1. The first character is Cornelius Crownsteed. As I mentioned before, he is available from the start of the game, so we are all set. Number two, the next one is his variation, Cornelius the Cornflower. To unlock him, you will need to complete his three feats. Feat number one is called a Fashionable Hat. For this one, you need to simply collect a hat. All you have to do is open chests that can be found in levels and you will randomly get a hat. Throughout your journey, you will collect many hats, so no worries about this one. Feat number two is called Staff Meeting. You need to collect a staff. Again, pretty simple, you can get this in the first level where you chase after a broom. The tutorial will lead you to this feat. Feat number 3 is called Quite Exciting. This one is to defeat a boss. Don't worry, you will unlock this feat by just defeating a boss. The first one is the Treasure Mantis on stage 4, so you should have this character unlocked after beating that boss. Number 3 is Cornelius the Forester. His first feat is Jack and the Beamstock. This one is actually a bit tricky. You need to combine three different spell beams into one. I unlocked it by shooting my ice beam at a combined beam of fire and electricity shot at me by enemies. But the best way to do this is to play co-op with two other players. Each party member uses a different beam spell and just combine to make a one powerful beam. And that unlocks the feat. Feat number two is called Graduation and it is to complete the game. Well, you're going to be doing this regardless, so no worries there. Feat number 3 is called Arcane Elements. You need to have 4 different elemental spells in your arsenal. There are 6 different spell types, Ice, Fire, Electric, Steed, Death, and Life. So have 4 different elemental spells by the time you finish the game and you should unlock this. It's also recommended to have 1 spell of each elemental type to cover for enemy weaknesses. Number 4 is Gilded Cornelius. Now to unlock this variation you need to beat the game on hardcore difficulty using any character. I used the second variation of Cornelius, you know the cornflower dude. He had good starting spells and he also had good attributes when leveling him up. I mainly chose to increase my damage output so fights would go easier as I could kill enemies easily. But choose the best character you're comfortable using. Number 5 is Gislan of Alcyon. She's available from the start so no problem there. Number 6 is her variation, which is the Exchange Student. For her, the first feat is Magnificent Healing. For this one, you need to heal for a total of 1000 points. It's a self-heal. 
What I did was I just let enemies hurt me till I was low health and I used a heal spell to get back to full health. All characters start with 300 health so from low health to full health you're looking at around 250 to 280 heal points. So heal yourself 4 times in a single fight from low to full health and you will unlock this feat when the fight finishes. Feat number 2 is called Help Yourself and for this one you need to use one of the healing spells listed here to heal yourself. The spells are Heal Barrage, Bouncing Heal, Huge Heal Ball or Healing Beam. I suggest looking out for these spells when going through the game. When you beat a boss, you are given a random choice between three spells. If one of these show up, take it into your arsenal and use the spell on yourself to unlock the feat. Feat number three is a major in healing. This one is simple, you need to have three different life spells in your arsenal. While going through the game, you will get six spells added to your arsenal. Usually after beating bosses, you will get a choice between three spells. Now I can't give you a path to take because the choices are always random and based on the choice you make, the next set of choices will vary. So do your best to collect three different spells that can heal and this feat will unlock. Number 7 is called the Autumn Witch and her first feat is called Untouchable. This one is real simple, just complete a battle where you and your allies, if you're playing in co-op, take no damage. Just stay far away and kill your enemies. Feat number 2 is being patient. You need to receive 300 points of healing from your teammate in a single fight. You can either let yourself get hurt while your teammates heal you or the easiest way is to join a multiplayer game. When you load into the game, you will be dead. Once your teammates revive you, the feat will unlock. Feat number 3 is called Clean Hands. This one is a bit tricky because you need to let 5 enemies kill each other. The best way to do this is when fighting a bunch of enemies while there is a Manglefest present. Manglefest will send shockwaves at you if you're far away from them, so when there are 5 other enemies present in a fight along with a Manglefest, just kite them in between you and the Manglefest. Eventually the beast will send shockwaves at you. It will take a couple shockwaves to kill the enemies, but they will eventually die. Remember, you can jump before the shockwave hits you to not take damage. Number 8 is Gilded Geeseland. Now this one is probably tied with being one of the hardest characters to unlock. Her quest is absolutely asinine. You can only find her quest in stage 21, the hot pools, and only in hardcore difficulty. Halfway through the level you will come to a statue that has the tip of a staff glowing green. You should receive a checkpoint right there if you're close to the statue. I recommend making a backup save on online storage or on an USB, because this is a really annoying quest. To even begin this quest you will need to be in possession of one of the three staffs related to Geeseland. The staffs are Geeseland's Staff of Verger, which can be dropped by healer enemies. The next staff is the Staff of Serenity which is unlocked after you collect 30 quills which should be no problem at all. The last staff is the Staff of Alcyon which can be found in chests or dropped by healer enemies on hardcore difficulty. Once you have one of these three staffs in your possession you can begin the quest called A Stroll Through the Meadows. The goal is to escort a lost lamb from this point to the end of the level. I highly recommend using a high level character who has really powerful spells that can take out enemies real quick. Also have a healing spell that can heal the lamb. This lamb loves to charge into battle and headbutt enemies. If the headbutt connects with an enemy, the enemy will die in one shot. Even you will die in a single hit from the lamb, so stay away from its attack as it can easily kill you, meaning you'll have to reload that save. The problem is that the enemies seem to lose focus on you and always target the lamb. So use healing spells to keep the lamb at full health and dish out high amounts of damage quickly. There are 5 encounters from when you meet the lamb till the end of the level. Each one gets progressively worse. The last one is an absolute nightmare. I tried to run ahead of the lamb and try to kill the enemies quickly. The spells I had were Frost Cloud, Huge Fireball, Frost Shard, Lightning Wave and Lightning Bolt. My only advice is to learn the enemy patterns and try to take them out quickly. Also level up your character and spend your unlock points on increasing your character's spell power and regeneration times for your spells. You can get lucky like I did, where the lamb kinda glitches and vanished. I beat all the enemies only to realize the lamb was not there, then it just magically appeared. Now I'm not going to complain, I was happy since I spent like 2 hours trying to unlock this character, but you might not be lucky. My final piece of advice is to try it in co-op as one player can constantly heal the lamb and the other can do damage. The problem is more enemies spawn, so decide for yourself.
Number 9 is going to be a new character and he's called Marvik the Torrid. To unlock him you need to complete his quest that is located in stage 13, Colder by the Hourglass. You also need one of his staffs in your possession. The first staff is Marvik's Kindling Staff which can be unlocked by freeing it from a giant pillar of ice in stage 11, the Shivering Steps. Use fire spells or hit it with melee attacks. You know, spam L2. The next staff is the Searing Staff. You need to collect 45 quills to unlock it. The last one is the Ember Light Staff which is unlocked randomly from chests in Hardcore or you can find it in the Pillar of Ice in Hardcore mode. Now that you have one of the three staffs you can start the quest. This quest is called the Trial of Fire and is located near the end of stage 13. You will eventually come down an elevator. After fighting a bunch of ice enemies go right to a statue. The door will open when one of the staffs is in your possession. Just go through the area using fire spells to light the torches. Once you reach the end of the trial, light the final set of torches in the room and you can unlock Marvek.
Number 10 is the Searing Senior. The first feat is called Incendiary, and that is to kill 5 enemies using the Fire Beam spell within 10 seconds. This is pretty simple when facing ice enemies. Make sure to have the Fire Beam spell in your arsenal. You can be technical and lower the health of the 5 enemies and then deal the killing blow by using the Fire Beam spell. Remember to hold the R2 button constantly to keep the beam going and aim at the next one. Feat number 2 is called Major in Fire and this is to possess 4 different fire spells. Again, as you go through the game just make sure to collect 4 fire spells before the game ends. Marvik already starts with 2 fire spells so you only need to collect 2 more. Just start a new game with him and keep choosing fire spells till you finish the feat. Feat number 3 is called Burn, and this one is to deal 1500 points of damage within a single fire spell cast. There are a couple ways to unlock this. First is to find a bunch of ice enemies. Make sure to increase your spell power using unlock tokens so you can do more damage. Also use staffs that increase fire damage or damage in general. Now use the fire beam spell without stopping till all the mana drains from you. You should try a couple times and eventually this will unlock. If not, there are two other spells that does a large amount of damage within a large radius. These spells are Cursed Meteor Shower and Fire Totem. Group a bunch of enemies and use either one of these spells to deal a ton of damage and hope you unlock this feat. Character number 11 is the Ember Lighter and his first feat is Splashing Sparks. You need to deal fire damage to 8 targets in a second. Sounds tough but can be done. You can use Huge Fireball or Meteor Shower or the Fire Totem. In hardcore, you'll be fighting like 15 plus enemies at once in many fights, so just toss one of these attacks and you should get lucky. Feat number 2 is called Firefighter, and it is to win a fight using only fire spells. That's pretty simple, there will be fights where there are only a couple of enemies. Use fire spells only and you should unlock this feat. Feat 3 is called Arson, and it is to kill at least 5 enemies with a fire spell cast. The best spell for this is Fire Totem, so make sure to find a bunch of enemies and toss Fire Totem out there. Ice enemies make it even easier. Character number 12 is the final variation for Marvek, which is the Gilded Marvek. To unlock him, you will need to complete the Trial of Fire quest in Hardcore Difficulty on Stage 13, Colder by the Hourglass. Character number 13 is Carabel the Glacial. To unlock her, you will need to complete her quest that is located in Stage 14, Endless Snowbanks. You also need one of her staffs in your possession. The first staff is Carabel's Icicle which can be unlocked by saving the snowman in stage 10 Dustfall on Tundra. Just beat the enemies without letting the snowman die and it will award you the staff. A fashionable new accessory in the Outback. The next staff is the Rhymy Icicle. You need to collect 60 quills to unlock it. The last one is the Eventide Icicle which is unlocked randomly from chests in Hardcore or you can get it from the Snowman in Hardcore mode. It is random though. Once you have one of these three staffs you can begin the quest in Stage 14 Endless Snowbanks. You will eventually come to a statue with a blue glow. To begin the trial you will need to put out all the flames around the area. Go around and use ice spells to put the fires out. If you do not have ice spells, press L2 to use melee. Once all the braziers have been put out, enemies will spawn. Take them out and you will finish the trial and unlock Carabelle. Number 14 is Carabelle the Rhymy. Her first feat is Deranged Frost. To get this one, you will need to use ice spells to freeze an enemy that uses ranged attack to hurt you. Just keep spamming your ranged ice moves to hit an enemy until it freezes. Should be easy to freeze a fire enemy. 
Feat number two is called Biting Cold. This one is a real hard one. You need to deal 1500 points of ice damage within a single ice spell cast. Unlike other elemental types that can do massive damage, ice type spells are limited. The best choices are Ice Beam and Frost Cloud. When fighting a bunch of fire type enemies, make sure to use Ice Beam continuously till you kill a bunch of them. Or use Frost Cloud once on a bunch of enemies and hope to get this unlocked. Make sure to use staffs that increase ice damage or damage output in general and increase your spell powers and damage output for your characters as well. Feat number 3 is Major in Ice. You need to possess 4 ice spells in your arsenal. Start the game with Carabel as she already starts with 2 ice spells. Now keep choosing ice spells to add to your inventory as you go through the game and once you get 4 ice spells you will unlock this feat. Character number 15 is Carabelle the Eventide. Her first feat is Everybody Freeze. You need to freeze 5 enemies within a second. The best spell for this is Frost Cloud. Fight a bunch of fire enemies and when they are close together drop a Frost Cloud to freeze them all. Feat number 2 is called Ice Sculpting and it is to keep a target frozen for 10 seconds straight. This is a bit tricky but can be done. You need to fight enemies that have massive health like Bergs. Use the spell Ice Beam to freeze the Berg, then start counting to 10. And every second, make sure to shoot your ice beam a little at the frozen bird to keep it frozen continuously. Should take a couple tries, but it will work. Another enemy that is perfect for this is the Silk Tree Sentry. Once frozen, they will unfreeze in 2 seconds, so make sure to keep hitting them with ice beam every second to keep them frozen, but not to do too much damage to kill them. Feat number 3 is called Frostfall. You need to kill 5 enemies with a single ice spell cast. Again, Frost Cloud is the best bet here. Make sure to lower the health of all 5 of the enemies. Then group them together and toss the Frost Cloud to finish them all at once. Character number 16 is Carabelle's last variation, which is Gilded Carabelle. I've mentioned how to start her quest and finish it to unlock her normal variations. It is much harder than doing it in normal or easy, as there are more enemies. Make sure to bring a lot of ice spells as there will be a lot of fire type enemies. The 17th character is a new one and it is the feline Rudolphus the Strange. To unlock him you will need to complete his quest that is located in stage 30, the marsh on your hemline. You also need one of his staffs in your possession. The first staff is Rudolphus's moon staff which are dropped by shaman enemies if you don't kill them last in a battle. The next staff is the occultist staff. You need to collect 90 quills to unlock it. The last one is the Crescent Staff which is unlocked randomly from chests in Hardcore or it can be dropped by Shaman enemies randomly. Once you have one of these three staffs you can begin the quest in Stage 30. The quest is called the Midnight Summoning and you will come across a statue about halfway into the level. Here there are three circles on the ground where moonlight is shining. You need to defeat an enemy when they are stepping inside the circles. One enemy each in all three circles. Once all three circles are powered up, you can unlock Rudolphus in the middle. Number 18 is the Feline Warlock. His first feat is Major in Death. You need to have 4 death spells in your arsenal. Start a new game with Rudolphus as he already has 2 death spells in his arsenal when starting out. Just play through the game till you can get 4 death spells in your arsenal to unlock this feat. Feat number 2 is Tremendously Deadly. You need to deal 2000 death damage in a single fight. This is easier than it sounds. 
Either use only death spells to do damage in a fight with a ton of enemies, or when fighting a boss only use death spells to take it down. You should easily get this feat. Feat number 3 is the deadliest plan. You need to win a fight only using death spells. Again, self-explanatory and simple, just use death spells in a single fight. Number 19 is Rudolphus the Moonstruck. His first feat is Timur Mortis. For this one you need to deal 2000 damage with a single spell cast. Now the good thing about this feat is that it isn't restricted to a specific element, meaning you can use any type of spell for this. The best one is the Fire Totem. It is absolutely a monster of a spell. Toss one in the middle of a group of enemies and it will do more than 2000 damage. I would say toss it at a group of ice enemies, say 7 plus enemies. Another good spell is Cursed Meteor Shower. You should get this feat done eventually by the time you finish hardcore at least. Feat number 2 is Broken Alliances. This one reads, have the monster or students kill each other at least 5 times in a single fight. This basically just means either enemies kill each other 5 times in a fight or students, as in the players, kill each other 5 times in a fight. In single player, just let a Manglefest kill enemies if you're fighting a big fight or if you're playing co-op, you and your co-op buddies can kill and revive each other 5 times. It's up to you. Feat number 3 is Death's Domain. For this one, you need to kill 5 enemies with a single area spell cast. Since there is no restriction for elemental type, you can choose your favorite AoE spell. My favorites are Death Circle, Cursed Meteor Shower, Fire Totem, and Frost Cloud. Just toss one of these spells on enemies that are weak to it. You can also lower the health of the 5 enemies and then toss one of these spells to kill them all easily. Number 20 is the last variation for Rudolphus, which is the Gilded version. As with all other Gilded characters, you need to complete his quest in Hardcore mode. There are a ton of enemies. Try not to kill all of them at once using a large AoE spell, or you might not have enough to finish the quest. I suggest either killing one enemy at each circle before finishing him off, or leave exactly three enemies behind and then kill one at a time at the circles. It's up to you. Good luck. You do get a checkpoint before this part, so I do suggest backing up your save on a USB or online in case something goes wrong. So number 21 is a new character and it is the Mechanical Owl. To unlock it, you will need to complete its quest that is located in Stage 31, Thunderous Mountains. You also need one of its staff in your possession. The first staff is the Owl Lightning's Rod, which I haven't unlocked. I have heard from my friend that it is dropped by the shaman enemies that spawn in stage 18, the loveliness of trees. Apparently you need to melee this enemy to death in order for the staff to drop. I have to test it, but I have heard similar reports from others. The next staff is the copper rod, which is the one I used. You need to collect 90 quills to unlock it. The last one is the Wolfram Rod, which is unlocked randomly from chests in Hardcore, or it can be dropped by Shaman enemies randomly. I got it from killing the Purple Shaman in Hardcore. I used a Lightning Bolt spell to take him out, and it dropped it. So yeah, I've beaten Hardcore twice now, and it never dropped it on my first run, so I guess you just need to be lucky. Once you have one of these three staffs, you can begin a Robotic Rescue Mission quest in Stage 31. You will eventually go across a chasm and the path behind you will be destroyed by lightning. You will fight some enemies with barriers, a silk tree sentry, and a hog. Once you beat them, you can follow the path to the crossroad. If you go up, you will go to the next part of the level. If you go left, you will come to the statue with a yellow glow on its top. This is the starting point for the quest. The goal of this quest is to keep the giant robot alive throughout the fight. There will be quite a few enemies here, so take them out using singular attacks, meaning not attacks that will do AoE damage, as you can kill the robot yourself. Make sure to constantly heal it throughout the fight. Once the fight is over and if the robot is alive, you can unlock the mechanical owl. I never knew robots were allowed to be wizards, really. Number 22 is the next variation for the owl, which is the copper owl. Its first feat is how stunning. You need to stun 5 targets at the same time. This is pretty simple using two spells, the lightning wave or the lightning bolt. Lightning wave sends a wave of lightning on the floor. Group a bunch of enemies and toss a couple lightning waves and they will be stunned for a few seconds. Lightning bolt, on the other hand, chains from one enemy to the next, so kite 5 or 6 enemies in a line and spam lightning bolts. You should get all of them stunned before they all die. 
Feat number two is Major in Lightning. You know the drill, you need to have four lightning spells in your arsenal. The owl starts with two, so start a new game using the owl and collect two more to get four lightning spells to unlock this feat. Feat number three, Deranged Lightning. To get this one, you need to use a lightning spell to prevent an enemy that uses ranged attacks from hitting you. In my opinion, it's worded poorly. Just use a lightning spell to take an enemy out that can use ranged attacks before it can attack you with its ranged moves. Simple. Number 23 is the Wolfram Owl. Its feat number 1 is That Hits the Spot. Kill 5 enemies with a single lightning cast. Since you won't really fight enemies that are steam types, which lightning is effective against, it's gonna be a tough one. The best bet is to use lightning beam on weak enemies that you can find early in the game. Kill 5 before your mana runs out and you should be fine. Feat number 2 is called Thunder and Boom. You need to win a fight using only lightning spells. Pretty much self-explanatory. Lightning spells all the way. Feat number 3 is Stormy Weather. You need to deal 1500 damage with a single lightning spell cast. Just like with other feats similar to this one, Lightning Beam is a good choice for a spell. You just need to be doing a lot of damage. Make sure to use staffs that have increased lightning damage or damage in general. Another more risky idea is to use Sticky Power Circle or Power Circle spell. These spells boost your offensive capabilities by 50%, but when the circle vanishes, a powerful lightning bolt hits the spot and a huge explosion happens. It does massive damage. If you can get 5 or 6 enemies in that circle when that explosion goes off, you can unlock this easy. You can even use yourself as a character to get hit with that explosion. The damage will count for the 1500 total. Number 24 is the final variation for the Owl, which is the Gilded version. To unlock it, you will need to complete a robotic rescue mission on Hardcore Difficulty. You get a checkpoint close by before the quest area, so make a backup save. This is actually easier than normal or easy as there are less enemies to deal with but they are more faster and more powerful. The robot does well to fend itself so make sure to take out the other enemies quickly. Also heal the robot when you get a chance to help it out. If it survives you will unlock the Gilded Owl. It finally gets wings. It was kinda weird not seeing it without them. Number 25 is another new character which is Nim the Cleaner. To unlock this masked wizard you need to complete his quest on stage 32, the Accursed Academy. You also need one of his staffs in your possession. Well, he uses a broom as his staff, so that's not weird at all. Anyways, uh, the first broom is the Nim's Enchanted Broom. This is a simple one. On stage 1, you get a tutorial to use the blink ability to catch the magical broom escaping you. And that's it. Easy as that. The next one is Nim's Boreal Broom. You need to collect 105 quills to unlock it. The last one is unknown to me. Usually, the final staff for each character is unlocked by doing the same thing you do to unlock the staff in normal or easy, but just on hardcore difficulty. I tried opening numerous chests and multiple times to finish Nim's quest on hardcore, and this broom would not unlock, so... Well, if you have it, good for you. I'm just an unlucky one. Either way, you will have his first broom, which is more than enough for this quest. With one of the brooms, you're ready to start the Vandalism at the Academy quest on stage 32, the final stage. As soon as the level loads, you will come to a statue that glows silver. It is the starting point to the quest. Your goal is to find 7 different graffiti drawings on walls and statues throughout the level, and to clean them. When you find one, go up to it and use steam magic spells, which only Nim can use, or when you equip the brooms, you can press the melee button to erase the graffiti art from the wall or the statues. Well, let's talk about all the locations. Number 1. Right at the beginning of the level, after the statue with the silver glow, there will be another statue close by that is at the center of a courtyard. The statue is holding a blue glowing orb. Walk up to it and melee it while the broom is equipped. Number 2. You will come to a point in the level where you will notice a broom in front of a doorway, leading to the next part of the level. To the left of the broom, you can find this next piece of vandalizing art. Number 3, you will eventually use an elevator to move up to another section. There will be a ton of enemies here. Once you beat them, move towards the next elevator. Look to the left of the elevator to find the graffiti on the wall. Number 4 is right after the previous one. You can take the elevator up to the next floor. Once you get off, look to the left of the elevator to find the next piece of graffiti on the wall. Number 5 is right before using the next elevator which is directly after fighting a ton of enemies and 3 hogs. Look to the left of the elevator to find the graffiti on the wall.
Number 6 is directly after the previous one. After using the elevator, follow the path and stop at the second statue, the one with a yellow teddy bear behind it. There is graffiti on the back of this statue. Number 7. The last one is before the final elevator, the one taking you to the final boss's room. It's to the left of the elevator. Once you erase the final graffiti, you can unlock Nim. Character number 26 is a variation of Nim, and it is called Boreal Nim, where he just looks all blue and sad. He's actually always sad. His first feat is called Sightseer. This one is simple, you just have to visit every level in the game. It will come naturally by just beating the game. Feat number 2, the Stick of Bludgeoning. You need to melee all enemies in a fight. This one is really simple. Start a new game on easy and the first enemy encounter you will be on stage 2. Just use L2 to melee all enemies to death. Feat 3, a difficult journey. You need to complete the game on hard. This game stacks difficulty so if you're planning to beat the game on hardcore then this will naturally get unlocked. Character number 27 is November Nim. His first feat is Arcane Fisticuff. You need to kill a target in full health with a single physical hit. So basically you need to kill an enemy in one hit using physical damage. No matter how much you power your melee attributes and use staffs to increase melee power, you still won't do the necessary damage to kill anything with one melee hit. So the best way is to use Amadeus. You can check out Amadeus and how to unlock him using the timeline, but Amadeus' primary spell is the box spell. This box spell is considered physical damage. Just use the box spell and drop it on a normal enemy and it should kill it in one hit and your feet should unlock. Feat number 2 is Galarum in, Expedi Galarum in Expeditum. Collect a hat in hardcore difficulty. This is really random actually. The game at random will give you a hat from a chest, usually after beating bosses, but you will get at least a couple hats when playing hardcore mode so nothing to really worry about. Just make sure you're opening chests, by the way. Feat number 3 is Magisterium. You need to complete a fight in 5 seconds in hardcore difficulty. There are many fights in hardcore mode where there are only a couple enemies. Just use your strongest spells to take them out quickly and it actually should come naturally. Number 28 is the final variation of Nim and is of course the Gilded one. To unlock Gilded Nim, you need to complete the Vandalism at the Academy quest on stage 32 in Hardcore. I've already mentioned how to start the quest and finish it while talking about his normal variation. I do advise backing up your save whenever you get a checkpoint as it is easy to die in this level with so many enemies coming from every angle. Good luck. Alright, number 29. This character that I'm going to talk about is probably the hardest to unlock in my opinion. It is only hard because the requirement to even start the quest is just annoying. He is of course Amadeus the Wizard. His quest is called the Advanced Box Magic and is located on stage 29. How about a cart ride? You will need one of his three staffs to get the quest started and you will definitely need his staff to start anything. The first staff is the Staff of the Artifact. It is located on Stage 32, the Accursed Academy. After you use the second elevator and fight a bunch of spider, scorpion looking enemies, you will notice a staff floating beside a statue. Go and collect it. The second staff is called the Staff of Trinity and you unlock it by random in chess or you can pick it up in hardcore difficulty at the same location you found the Staff of the Artifact. Now, I never got a chance to unlock the third staff, so again, I don't know what's happening with this one. Either way, once you have one of these staffs, you can start the advanced box magic quest in stage 29. As soon as the level starts, you will notice two boxes that glow blue. You need to equip one of these staffs. This lets you levitate boxes when you try to melee a box, so press L2 when close to a box to lift it up. The goal is to move one of these boxes to the start of the trial area. This is a long distance away. Not only that, you also have to fight 6 enemy encounters before you can move the box into the trial start location. You get one checkpoint after the third enemy encounter, but if the box breaks after the checkpoint, the box will vanish, so I highly advise you to make a backup save after the level starts. Make sure to kill all the enemies before moving the box. 
If need be, place the box away from the combat area. For the first two encounters, it's okay if the box breaks, because you can run back and pick up another box at the start of the level. But once you start the third encounter, there's no going back, so practice a couple times as you will mess up a lot. It is easier in co-op, so you may consider doing it with a couple friends.
Once you get the box to the trial start area, the door will open. Go inside to the trial area. You will notice there are several boxes around the hall. Here, there will be tons of enemies with a rainbow colored barrier around them. This means you can't hurt them with spells, only physical attacks hurt them. Since you are using the staff of the artifact or one of Amadea's other staffs, you can levitate the boxes around the room and drop them on the enemies. And that's pretty much it. Try to keep the boxes safe because if all of them break, you have to melee the enemies till all of them are dead. You might need a couple healing spells. Again, co-op works wonders here. Once you beat all the enemies using physical damage, Amadeus will be unlocked. Number 30 is his next variation which is called Amadeus the Box Magician. His first feat is the Hero of Trine, that's actually a cool reference to one of their earlier games. Well moving on, for this one you need to beat all bosses as Amadeus, so basically the whole game has to be beaten again while using Amadeus. He's a really fun character to use so just complete the game as him on easy mode if you really want to get it done quickly. Feat number 2 is called Fireball Come To Me. You need to collect 9 parchments as Amadeus. This basically means to have all 9 spells in your arsenal. You need to play as Amadeus and finish stage 28 which involves the Chimera of Rage boss. This is the last time you will receive a parchment. Since you will need to beat the game as Amadeus, this feat will unlock naturally. Feat number 3 is These Things Happen. You have to kill yourself or your fellow teammate using a box spell. This one is real simple, if you're playing solo, use Amadeus and select his box spell. Now go towards a wall and toss the box, and then drop it quickly. You should drop it on yourself and get killed. It might take a couple tries, but it will work. The easier method is to join a multiplayer game and drop a box on a teammate. Simple. Character number 31 is the next variation of Amadeus, which is Amadeus the Hero. His first feat is the undefeatable box wizard. You need to beat the game on hardcore difficulty. This is another one that you'll be working towards as you need to beat the hardcore mode to unlock all gilded characters anyway, so no worries there. Feat number two is boxing match. You need to create three boxes in a single fight. This is easy yet a bit boring. You can start a new game as Amadeus and use the box spell in a fight and run around till the mana regenerates so you can do it two more times. Or just play through the game as Amadeus and upgrade his box spell regen and cast time attributes. This will help in regenerating his box spell faster and you won't feel like it's a big grind. Your choice. Feat number three is unboxing new spells. For this one you will need to have four different elemental spells. Again, for the umpteenth time. Just play the game as Amadeus and as you unlock new spells, try to choose spells with different elements for your arsenal. Once you collect four different elemental spells, you should unlock this feat. Number 32, the final character variation for Amadeus and the final character in this list is Gilded Amadeus. As you may have guessed, you need to finish the advanced box magic quest in hardcore mode. Now, this can be really strenuous trying to play a different character and use the levitation from one of Amadeus' staffs, so my advice is use Amadeus instead. This way you don't have to carry the box from the beginning of the level to the trial start location. Instead you can just use his box spell to make a box. This makes it 20 times easier and less annoying. I do suggest backing up your save in case you die. It is hardcore after all. I played on co-op when unlocking this gilded variation and it made the actual quest much easier. I do advise the same. Just one other player to have your back and to heal is fine. Having more than one other co-op player makes it more chaotic and there are more enemy spawns. Just something to consider. Either way, once you complete the quest on hardcore, you will unlock gilded Amadeus. And that's it guys, all 32 characters unlocked and in your possession. Use them how you want. Also you get 30 trophies for just unlocking each character. 
pretty cool in my opinion. Either way, hope this video helped, and at this point I'm beat. Thirsty as well. Good luck unlocking them all. That's it for this one. If you guys liked or found this video helpful, drop a like to help me out. And please do rate and share this video whenever you get a chance and is much appreciated. For all the newcomers to the channel, welcome. Enjoy your visit to the channel and consider subscribing to stay tuned to more guides and game content. Also helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys next time and as always, take care. Back into the fun. I'm hot.